What's going on guys and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be talking about the single most important thing that we need to be concerned with as Amazon sellers and that is the buy box. For those of you guys who don't know, the buy box is the featured offer on a specific product listing and from a numbers perspective, anywhere between 80 and 90% of all Amazon sales happen through that buy box. It's rotated amongst sellers on a specific listing. Right, so it's worth noting that we need to be very, very much concerned about how we can maximize our chances and opportunity inside that buy box. And that'll grow our sales as an Amazon business. So that's what the video is gonna be about today, guys. If you're new to the channel, my name is Garrett. I'm a seven-figure Amazon seller, showing you how you all can make a living off of Amazon as well. So without further ado, stick around for the video and we will get into it. When we talk about the macro level buy box win percentage of our Amazon business, and really maximizing that ownership, then leading to more profitability and, and just more sales in general, right? There are things we can control and there are things that we cannot control. In, in the scope of the buy box algorithm and, and how Amazon really rewards different sellers with different buy box percentages and, and win percentages, right? And so it's worth noting that we need to focus all of our attention on the things that we can control inside the algorithm and ignore the things that we cannot. And just for context, some of the things that we cannot control inside the buy box algorithm that ultimately affect our win percentage are first and foremost location, right? The buy box algorithm is location based, is geographically based. So we, and so if I'm looking at a specific product in Pen, here in Pennsylvania, a specific ASIN, and I have a friend in California looking at the same exact product, same exact ASIN, it's likely the case that we're going to see different sellers inside that buy box. Reason being, Amazon has a, a super fluent logistical capacity and logistical system. Right? If I go and send in products to their FBA entire logistical system, they're gonna receive those units and diversify and bring them throughout the country and send them throughout the country wherever they see fit based on different regional demand of that specific product, based on existing units in specific parts of the country. Right? So I just simply can't control if my units are sitting in a part of the country where I just naturally aren't getting as much sales as a different part. Right? But those effects, those factors are, are minuscule in, the fact in comparison to what we can control. Right? However, the side of the coin that we can affect right, that directly correlate our buy box win percentage and overall profitability of our business are really, really threefold. Are the products we choose, how we price those specific products, and then obviously the tools and the software that we use to maximize those products. Right, on that micro product level, there's definitely things we can be aware of and definitely nuances we can pick up on when we're looking and sourcing products that ultimately have a direct impact on the amount of buy box that we can expect. I'll show you what I mean with this specific product that I have in mind. So the reason why I'm bringing up this specific product, if, if we go into the, the buy box, um, the rotation statistics, this specific product shows us something super interesting, right? So if we start in the 365 scope of the buy box win percentage, we see this one seller right down here, Lenten, uh, regardless of what they're called, right? At 3%, and this is a while ago, right? This is uh, essentially 365 uh, a year ago, right? As we get more micro, watch what happens. We're gonna see Lenten 3%. As we score, as we span uh, in a closer time frame, 180 days, Lenten's up to 7%, right? As we span to 90 days, Lenten's up to 10%. And as we come into the 30 day buy box rotation, the most recent 30 days, Lenten's up to now 24%, right? That's super interesting. And there's a key takeaway from just that exhibit right there. Right, what that is telling us, and it's not just this product, you can see this across the entire Amazon catalog. Amazon rewards longevity on products, right? Amazon rewards high in stock percentage on products. The longer we stay in stock, the more, flu uh, the more um, uh, continuous we stay in stock, right? The higher in, in stock percentage, the better off we are on that product. And the higher win percentage, the higher buy box win percentage on that product we will then earn. Right, that's super apparent inside the data that Amazon shows us. And so we can consider that when we're starting to source for products inside and, and to fill our catalog with those specific products. What does this mean? Right, so now, if we're, lo if we're concerned with this sort of maximum buy box win percentage, we need to be looking for longer term products, products that we expect to be able to restock, products that we expect to be able to continue to sell, to sell 
for months and months and months, right? What we call this stereotypical replenishable product, replenishable product will ultimately y yield higher buy box win percentage, right? That's a key takeaway. And that's one of the main, main theses of Amazon is, right, looking for that longevity not only benefits your business from, a, you know, an efficiency or restock percentage, but from a micro capacity, the data suggests that if we just stay in stock, if we remain in stock, our ownership of that product will outlast and increase and e exponentially grow past other sellers, right? As sellers fall out of stock, they'll drop down. As sellers go out of stock and don't refill, they drop down. And so that's a key point, right? So we need to be focusing and, and filling our catalog on those specific products, using data that supports that, sport of that sort of analysis, right? Looking more into the historical data, looking more into the long-term averages rather than just a couple of data points um, today, right? Going to find the next three or five units at a specific store, buying and selling those, isn't going to maximize our buy box percentage, right? We're gonna sell those three or five units, we're gonna go out of stock, and we're not gonna have any sort of benefit from those units other than just the simple profitability, right? There's no com scaling exponential component embedded within those specific products. The second piece of the equation, right, we talked about product selection. The second piece is pricing, right? Our pricing strategy is going to be immensely, infinitely um, important when we're talking about maximizing our buy box win percentage. And we see it on display in this rotation right here. We need to be pricing our products where the majority of the pricing activity already exists, right? That's a key point. And so we can see what sort of percentages are correlating to specific price points, right? This is the current buy box rotation. And we see one seller here up at 24%, our, our friend Lenton, right? And we see, you know, 15% at 35, we see 13% at 35 as well, 9% at 37, so on and so forth, right? And so this is encompasses about 50, 60% of the entire ro rotation right here. And that is between 35 and 38. And so that's where we need to be pricing. We need to be pricing where the most real estate on that price chart is happening. We need to be pricing where the most activity in the buy box rotation is happening, right? We see 1% down here at 33, 1% down here at 33. Um, we see 8% here at 33. But again, we wanna talk about maximizing it. We wanna be, we want to be focusing on pricing where the most pricing activity, where the most sellers, where the most ownership is happening. That's going to put us in percentage, uh, in a position to maximize the buy box percentage of that specific product. In this case, right, it doesn't do us any good to price at 40, right, because no sales are going at 40. Just as it doesn't make sense to price at 32 because no sales are going at 32. If we price where the existing market exists, we will succeed and that's how we win overall um, with the Amazon business uh, at and scale. And the very last piece of the equation, for those of you guys who have made it this far in the video, is, is automation, is software. We need to be using a repricer that's going to continue to be repricing and continue to work while we're not working, right? We are doing ourselves a significant injustice by you not using a repricer for the, same, for the simple fact that if we are not priced equal to the current buy box, we're likely not going to, we're going to miss out on sales. Our best chance to get the next, to increase our chances of winning the buy box, our best chance at being the next in the rotation is to be equal to the current buy box rotation, is to be equal to the current buy box price, right? And if we just simply set one price and forget it and revisit a day from now and change the price to where the buy box is and then revisit another day, we're missing out on so much opportunity by just simply not being equal to the buy box. Whereas if we have a software that does that, that oscillation for us, where the price moves from 34 to 34 and a half to 35 to 35 point, uh, to $35 and 60 cents. If we can just make those little adjustments and always be very, very equal to the buy box price, that's going to increase our chances of um, maximizing our product level buy box win percentage and then macro scale company wide buy box percentage. And just for some simple math, right? If we're using, um, so we use Be Cool in our business. Um, they're a very good software, right? I highly recommend, which costs $100 per month, right? And if just to do some simple math, if we just divide that $100 across the four weeks in the month, right? BQ is costing us $25 per week to replace our products every single second of every single day, right? If you just spend an hour repricing, call it every single week, right? Repricing your catalog every single week, that's four hours a month, right? If you divide that $100 for the repricer into your four hours that you're spending per month on repricing, 
you're doing while you were pricing a $25 an hour activity. And I would argue that if you're watching this video, if you're indulging yourself in the content, if you're trying to commit to this Amazon business, your time is probably worth more than that $25 an hour that you are devaluing yourself by repricing each and every time you do. Right, so use a repricer, and if you need a recommendation, there's a free trial down below in the comments, um, in the description, that gives you um, a free trial to, tr to try out BQL um, and see if you like that software. We do. We use it every single day in our business and love it. Um, so with that being said, guys, that is a wrap for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, like the video, subscribe to the channel, and we will see you in the next one.